Well, I was exceptionally excited. Maury has always been one of my idols. David Westfall Bates was born June 5, 1957 in Madison, Wisconsin. He was to be the oldest of three children, being joined by John and Liz as the family settled into life at the University of Arizona in Tucson. The move that I really remember is going from Illinois to Arizona because we, we drove out uh, on Route 66 um, and I was in a little black Volkswagen on that drive. David's dad triggered his interest in bird watching when he was about four years old, and that interest grew, so on his sixth birthday, he asked for and was given a trip to Mexico with his dad to go bird watching. We had a great trip. We went to a place called San Blas. It turned out, though, that we went to the wrong San Blas, so we didn't see some of the birds we were expecting to see. But I've been a birder ever since. David's fascination with birds led to bird-themed science projects and dominance in school science competitions. My nickname in elementary school was Bird Brain Bates. And people, no one, no one called me David. I was always a bird or triple B. While still in high school, David played quite a bit of duplicate bridge with his parents. But his main partner was an electrical engineer at the University of Arizona, and they did well competitively at the state level. When it was time for college, he headed to Northern California and Stanford University, where he had a great time, and it opened his horizons. This was my first exposure to computing on a big scale. I was on the Stanford Committee for Computational Facilities, which was exciting as a, as a freshman. After Stanford, David went east to Johns Hopkins University for medical school, and that's where he met his wife, Carol. They graduated from Hopkins in 1983 and headed for his internship and residencies in internal medicine at the Oregon Health Sciences University. He stayed on the faculty there for a year, and then it was back across the country to Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston for his fellowship in internal medicine, and he never left. At the time, the Brigham was considering putting in computer order entry, and it just seemed to me that it was going to be a very powerful tool for changing the way that people made decisions. Initially, David viewed computerization as a means to improve efficiency, but the Harvard Medical Practice Study showed the leading cause of harm to patients was adverse drug events. And that was an aha moment. Maybe computers could be used to improve medication safety. So we then went on to do the Adverse Drug Event Prevention Study, which was the biggest study of its type to look at the epidemiology of harm related to medications. And we found uh, quite a bit of harm, and then we did a second stage of that in which we intervened with, with computer order entry and clinical decision support and showed that that uh, made prescribing and, and the overall medication process much safer. His work on understanding drug errors and some of the precursors for incidents has been landmark and used, picked up and used across the country. Interestingly, David was not an early proponent of medical informatics, not sure it was a good fit for him. But Reed Gardner changed his mind. I saw myself as an evaluator, not so much as somebody who built systems, and he made the point that it was very important to have a little more evaluation in informatics. And, uh, and I felt like at that point that, that what I did would be valued. David is a pragmatic scientist. He asks research questions of intellectual importance, but also of practical application. David has engaged across the disciplines and recognizes through his deep investment in his practice that the truly safe care of a patient requires truly safe practice across all disciplines. Putting the field of biomedical informatics under the microscope, what does David Bates see? I'm focused most on the clinical side, and we're now using electronic records, which is, which is great, but we still have a long ways to go to, uh, to uh, use them in ways that, that will really improve care the most. So I see that as uh, perhaps one of the biggest things in the next five years. His radar screen is also tracking precision medicine, figuring out how to bring that information to the point of care and the potential of big data. Also, David is convinced of the huge importance of bringing nurses to the forefront of informatics. If, for example, you just look at what decision support we have today, most of it is directed at physicians, and that's silly. We should be doing much more um, with, with, with nursing. 
First and foremost, he's a tremendously generous scholar. He's always looking for opportunity to bring people into his work with him to celebrate their ideas and to foster collaborations, whether local, national, or international. David thinks that Patty Brennan's nursing background is a perfect fit now that she's director of the National Library of Medicine. She has, has a variety of talents. Uh, she's an engineer, she's a nurse, and I think she will help uh, change the way that we, we think about uh, improving care with informatics. Mentoring successive generations of scientists and informaticians is an important part of Dr. Bates' legacy. One of the things I really love most about uh, David Bates is that he is, he loves to collaborate and he loves to mentor and he's collaborated with uh, people across disciplines on so many different topics, um, health policy, research, um, medicine, informatics. I have been fortunate to have been mentored by David for almost 20 years. It's just incredibly rewarding to see somebody that you work with uh, do, do uh, really terrific things of their own. David's research is unique in being so very applied. For example, some of his work on clinical decision support has directly informed patient care in real time. I think my biggest single contribution has been showing that when you computerize prescribing, that it makes it substantially safer, both uh, in the hospital and then outside it. On the private side of the ledger, David and Carol have been joined in life's journey by son Michael and daughter Sarah. Away from his marvelous career, David has traveled the globe, 75 countries in all, in search of some of the rarest known birds. And he's seen more than 6,000 of the 10,000 species. I'll give you an example. I, on every trip, I pick one bird that you most want to see. And uh, we went to Bhutan recently. The bird I wanted to see was Satter tragopan, which is quite a special bird. It's a very flashy pheasant. And finally, on the last day, this male came out in the, in the bright sunlight. That was, that was a, a fabulous feeling. But the birding is just one of many diversions. There's mountain climbing, rock climbing, long distance cycling, and backcountry skiing, and a love of reading, and travel too. Work-life balance is really important to me and I found it to be um, in incredibly satisfying to do a, a set of things uh, out outside of work. Uh, even though I've published a lot of papers, some of my greatest satisfaction has come from doing some of the other things that I do and I always have a, a set of birds that I want to see and a set of mountains that I want to climb and, and so on. And these aren't necessarily solo adventures. The whole family, David, Carol, Michael, and Sarah, at one time or another, have birded, or climbed, or cycled, or skied together. My family has, has been incredibly supportive, and, and they like some of the, the things that I do uh, more than others. Um, they, both kids really love mountain climbing, and they've, they've uh, completely gotten into rock climbing. Um, my son is, is a ter terrific rock climber at this point. And just how did David learn that he's the 2016 recipient of the Morris Collin Medal? I heard from Bill Tierney, so I got a message saying that Bill Tierney wanted to talk with me, and I, th I thought it was gonna be about recruiting some more people to Texas or something like that. But uh, I was very pleasantly surprised when it was about this. Congratulations, David, on this tremendous accomplishment. The recognition of our peers for the work that you have done reflects the respect that we hold you in, the value of your intellect, and the depth of your humanity. Thank you for being a friend, for being a leader, and for being a visionary. David, you're an exceptional mentor and boss, and I'm so pleased that you're getting the Morris Collin Award. This is a public recognition for what we, your mentees, know in, in our interactions with you, which is that there is no one who is a finer human being and a better scientist. Uh, this is the greatest honor that I've ever received.